Hello. Well, hello there, mister. Welcome to Valda's Inn. I'm Martha Garrett, but everyone calls me Ma. How can I help you? One of I'm Nelson Tethers. I have a reservation. Oh, oh, yeah. You're here about the Eraser Factory, eh? We're awfully excited to have a real FBI man in our town. It's just like TV, yeah? Ooh, I'm gonna make some hot dish for you later. A uh, hot dish? Oh, you'll love it. I've never met a man who didn't love himself some hot dish. It's got to be a curry, surely. All guys like curry, don't they? So, uh, what room am I in? Yeah, okay. I've got your room right here. Oh, dear. This is so embarrassing. The night clerk wrote down your room number in code. Hmm. Mind if I Great. have a look? I bet I can figure out what room I'm in. Yeah, I'm a puzzle agent. This is my job. Uh, the security-minded uh, night clerk noted down Nelson's room number in the cryptic form. Help Martha see what's written so you can get your keys. Solve it. Well, <laughs> nine, clearly. <laughs> Says it there. <laughs> well, that was too easy. Hey, he accepted. I don't know who wouldn't be able to see that that's his nine. There you go, Mrs. Garrett. Oh, yeah, Apart from her, nice, obviously. See? Okay, then. Here's your room key, FBI She's man. She's bit stupid. <laughs> Thanks. Actually, while I have you here, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Real quick, I promise. Oh, yeah, of course. Getting around. How do I get to the factory from here? The FBI doesn't know where the factory is? Oh dear. I know it's my first it time here. Rest so of course assured, ma'am, the FBI just likes to confirm intelligence with civilian knowledge of. We like to double check things. Oh, of course. Well, it's easy. I have a tourist map of our little town of Scoggins right here. Good. You know, our Scoggins Erasers is the plant that supplies the White House with all of its erasers. The President could be fixing a mistake with a Scoggins Eraser right now. Yes, ma'am. That's why I'm here. That and the fact that every time the Bureau made an inquiry into the situation, all we ever got back were bizarre puzzles. Oh yeah, well, that'll happen. Do you know anything about the problem at the factory? Yeah, so tragic about the accident, huh? Accident? Oh, yeah, the foreman, Isaac Davner, they say he was killed in there. Is that so? He was killed, damn. Well, not to be gossipy, but by a giant fire, the accident was caused by raccoons. <laughs> raccoons? Yeah, little creatures that live in the woods around the factory. A raccoon. Maybe you should go talk to Sheriff Bog about it, though. You should be able to catch him out by the factory right now. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. The guy in the lobby, is he okay? Oh, that's Bo Murphy. He's always been a bit of an odd one. Yeah, he sits <laughs> yeah, there all day trying to do his puzzles. He mostly keeps to himself, and I bring him some food from time to time. Sometimes I swear he'd starve to death if I didn't bring him something to eat. Thanks. Let's go well, talk to him. Enjoy your stay. Oh, that reminds me. Do you have any gum for sale? Or know where I can buy some? Dear, we've been out of gum for quite some time. What? Haven't seen a stick in months anywhere in town. We tend to get shipments of things like that in the spring. So, no gum? Nope. Gum helps me concentrate. Pick up the... Oh. Okay, so you... gum helps him concentrate. Wait, so he chews used gum. Nelson tethers things best when he's chewing gum. Any kind of gum, find it, discard it, and use it to get a hint during a sticky puzzle. Nice. <laughs> Excuse me, you look perplexed. Puzzles. So many puzzles. Puzzles? I might be able to help you with that. Uh, Bo has swallowed a rubber band again. His x-ray shows only tapeworms, or does it? 
Rotate segments of the pesky parasites to reveal the hidden objects. Okay. Um, that obviously can't be right. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, ah, that doesn't look too good there. So let's rotate this. Yeah, that looks good. Um, can I... Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, but this is a bit messed up. Ah, there we go. Um, right, see it. Well, this one's got no head. But it's got a point, so it's obviously a tape worm. This one's got a point. Can that... Ah, but that can go off. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. Is that it? That... That must be it. Yeah, let's... Try that, yeah. Let's try that. Yeah, but that looks... That looked right. There was a ring and... Yep. Everything looked... Like it matched it up. It was all... Even. Didn't have to chew any used Come gum. In, you can relax a little. <laughs> With the uh, whispers, and, uh, if it's an acrostical enigma, maybe it's a, a Baltimore trans deletion. Uh, the whispers, or not? Okay, is a bit weird, that dude. Let's have a look outside. Oh, gum. There's another one up there. Oh. Someone left a Let's screwdriver a in the alley beside the hotel. Looks clean. Probably of no consequence. Oh. Thought someone might have been messing around with this thing. Hmm. Looked like there's a pole back here. In local contest. Okay, the Annabelle Grill Ladies Arm Wrestling Tournament is over. And the judge missed it. Read the four statements and help him determine the winner. Okay. I pin pearl like a new hat. Uh, outmatched by the Grizzly Grip. Pat one fair and square. Flo's grizzly grip couldn't whip me. Well then... If she got outmatched, she lost. And Pat one fair and square, so she obviously lost. So... I pin pearled like a new hat. That could mean... One of those two, or that could mean her, couldn't it? Since we don't know their names. Um, Flo's Grizzly Grip couldn't whip me. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the, one of those two. So it's either one of these two. If it's one of those two, then it flows grizzly grip couldn't whip me. Uh, let's let's try her. If it's not hers, I think it's gonna be her. But we'll see. Taxpayer dollars spent seventy-five thousand. Oh, that was alright. Okay. I know it was going to be either one of those two. Okay. That was a tricky one. No, it wasn't too bad. Okay, let's go back in. Well, no, we've got to go to the factory, don't we? I've spoken to him, spoken to her. There's no gum around, so let's leave.
The residents of Skagen seem nice enough. Aside from one wild goose chase, everyone's been cooperative. Plus, it looks like I'm primed for all the hot dish I can eat. It remains to be seen if that's a good thing. I got a map from the hotel owner, so I'm heading over to the eraser factory. Agent Tether is out. Am I supposed to be saying that? I don't think it really matters, does it? Uh... Let's go to the eraser factory, which is all the way across town. Okay. Oh, it's come on the floor. There's one there. Any more? Interesting. Uh, it's clearly a game, Out at the eraser it? factory. The doors to the factory are very locked. Some sort of custom-built contraption has got this place locked up tighter than Fort Knox. The device seems damaged, though. It seems to be missing a piece. Okay, let's talk, Hi, talk to the Bob. sheriff. Yeah, I'm uh, Nelson Tethers of the FBI's Department of Puzzle. Nelson Tethers, good to meet you. We got a real mess here. Yes, we do. We do? Oh, yes. It's gonna be a while before we can get this factory running again. But my job is to get this factory back to making erasers. Agent Telly, you're in a right pickle. Well, I should probably ask you some questions about the incident, then. That's what I'd do if I was a big, important FBI boy. Incident. What was this incident? Well, we don't need to be dramatic. What happened? There was an explosion. What? Damn. Oh, yeah. A big explosion. And the foreman just never came home. What caused by the raccoons? When did Time the accident, accident take place? Well, I've been trying to figure that out myself. Here's what I know. The Rest Easy Guard service was employed to keep watch over the factory from midnight to midnight yesterday. From their statements, can you determine the time of the big noise? Okay. Boom, one hour before the last shift started. Uh, only Bernie, him, put in the full out eight hours. I get the shortest shift, three hours. Worked from six till I was relieved. Um... They did six hours. Oh, no, it worked from six. Okay, so if it was midnight to midnight, then that would be 24 hours, wouldn't it? So... If he says one hour before the last shift, then that's got to be... He gets... That's got to be there, then, surely. It's three hours. An hour before. We only got paid eight hours. Um. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna try that. I don't know why that would make sense. Oh, okay, it did. <laughs> yeah, let's just look at how. Bernie worked eight hours of the out of the twenty-four hour day and Pop worked three. Al worked six hours and Iggy worked seven. Iggy had to start at six AM because he was relieved by another guard. Al came first and worked the six hour shift, then Iggy started at 6am and ended at 1pm. Bernie worked the third shift since he had, he heard the noise. His shift went to 9pm, so the explosion happened at 8pm. 